Finally, although I wasn't with them on the morning when they awoke, lost in the Sonoran Desert, I have spent many spring mornings there. I know the smell and the sound of the dawn quite well. I know the time of year, and I know the weather conditions in which they found themselves. The Welton 26 had scant time to worry about the nature aspects of their journey, but no story about death and the devil's highway could rightly exist without the strong presence of desolation in all its intimidating glory. Part 1. Cutting the Drag Chapter 1. The Rules of the game. Five men stumbled out of the mountain pass so sunstruck they didn't know their own names, couldn't remember where they'd come from, had forgotten how long they'd been lost. One of them wandered back up a peak. One of them was barefoot. They were burned nearly black, their lips huge and cracking, what paltry drool still available to them spuming from their mouths in a salty foam as they walked. Their eyes were cloudy with dust, almost too dry to blink up a tear. Their hair was hard and stiffened by old sweat, standing in crowns from their scalps, old sweat because their bodies were no longer sweating. They were drunk from having their brains baked in the pan. They were seeing God and devils, and they were dizzy from drinking their own urine, the poisons clogging their systems. They were beyond rational thought. Visions of home fluttered through their minds, soft green bushes, waterfalls, children, music, butterflies the size of your hand, leaves and beans of coffee plants burning through the morning mist as if lit from within, rivers, not like this place where they'd gotten lost, nothing soft here. This world of spikes and crags was as alien to them as if they'd suddenly awakened on Mars. They had seen cowboys cut open cacti to find water in the movies, but they didn't know what cactus among the many before them might hold some hope. Men tore their faces open, chewing saguaros and prickly pears, leaving gutted plants that looked like animals had torn them apart with their claws. The green here was gray. They were walking now for water, not salvation, just a drink. They whispered it to each other as they staggered into parched pools of their own shadows, forever spilling down hill before them. Just one drink, brothers, water, cold water. They walked west, though they didn't know it. They had no concept anymore of destination. The only direction they could manage was through the gap they stumbled across as they cut through the granite mountains of southern Arizona. Now canyons and arroyos shuffled them west toward Yuma, though they didn't know where Yuma was and wouldn't have reached it if they did. They came down out of the screaming sun and broke onto the rough plains of the Cabeza Prieta wilderness at the south end of the United States Air Force's Barry Goldwater bombing range, where the sun recommenced its burning. Cutting through this region and lending its name to the terrible landscape was the Devil's Highway, more death, another desert. They were in a vast trickery of sand. In many ancient religious texts, fallen angels were bound in chains and buried beneath a desert known only as desolation. This could be the place. In the distance, deceptive stands of mesquite trees must have looked like oases. Ten trees a quarter mile apart can look like a cool grove from a distance. In the western desert, twenty miles looks like ten, and ten miles can kill. There was still no water. There wasn't even any shade. Black ironwood stumps writhed from the ground. Dead for 500 years, they had already been 2,000 years old when they died. It was a forest of eldritch bones. The men had cactus spines in their faces, their hands. There wasn't enough fluid left in them to bleed. They'd climbed peaks.